guys, it's Debbie, and today I'm going to do something just a little different. I was contacted by an Amazon vendor, and they asked if I wanted to try out one of their products, and in return, I would do a review on Amazon. Since it's something that you guys may be interested in, I decided I'd do an unboxing and review here on YouTube. So let's get started. Here's the box that I received from a company called Cronova. Uh, the product I'm trying out is an A4 laminator. A4 laminator. You may have seen that I use a laminator. Typically that is one from Scotch and you can pick that up at Target or Amazon for usually around $20 to $35. And that laminator can laminate up to nine inches wide. So this new laminator, as I mentioned, is from Cronova, and it laminates um, A3 size paper, or 13 inches. I will be including all the product information and a feature comparison over on my blog, so you'll wanna go and check that one out. Link to that is down below. So everything looks like it's packaged very well. Um, this also included a paper cutter and a, a corner punch. So I'll go over, I'll try those out and let you see that as well. The standard packaging is that styrofoam and everything is wrapped in plastic. And there, it also includes a lot of laminating material. So it's got a lot of packets there, um, including up to that A3 size, which is bigger than anything that I typically laminate. But that doesn't mean I can't cut those apart and use them for smaller projects. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this puppy unwrapped and plugged in and try it out. So it's not very heavy, it's just like a, a regular, um, my other laminator wasn't heavy either. And I'll include, I believe they have all those details included on the listing. So I'll go ahead and add that as well. So I'll go ahead and plug that one in. There's a little instruction manual, just a couple of pages that gives some of the basic details. One of the things I like about this machine is it does have a power button on the side. This one is good for hot and cold laminating. I'm not sure how the cold laminating is gonna work with the machine. Um, the only type of laminating that I've used so far is that self-adhesive that I, you can pick up at Target or hot laminating, which is what I've used with my Scotch machine before. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this one for hot. Um, you'll notice on the front of the machine, it's got a, um, a light that keeps blinking. So it basically takes about two minutes for it to warm up. The scotch doesn't tell me whether or not it warms up or not. It just, you know, you just assume. Um, but this one tells you when it's ready. Um, I th think I'm gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison later because I'm going from memory from how my scotch works since I haven't used it in a bit. And that way you can see how everything works on that one. While we're waiting for the ready light to turn green, I figure I'll go ahead and get um, a small project, we'll go ahead and get that ready for us to put in there. So I'm just taking a piece of pattern paper. This is a scrap from a previous project and I'm gonna use their um, corner punch to try um, just to round those corners. I had trouble finding where it was supposed to go in. So I wouldn't recommend this um, corner punch. If you don't have one and you're getting the laminator just for the laminator, great. You've got something that you can use. Um, I believe it does about a quarter inch rounding when you can get it in there to work correctly. Um, I wound up pulling out my corner chomper because I didn't want to have to deal with this corner rounder. And as you can see, the ready light is on. So once I finish rounding those corners, we can go ahead and run our first item through the machine. So I've got one of the sleeves that they included. You can see that large pack over to the left of the machine. Um, and so I'm just gonna put that in there, slide it all the way in. And then um, that front black lip you see, that is where you're supposed to put it in there. And I'm of course double checking because I haven't used this machine before. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and run it in. You can tell by the length of that black lip that you can put a very, very wide piece um, through there to laminate. I think that's kind of cool. I don't think I'll have any problems with sizing on anything. I'll be able to do larger projects than I thought about doing before. Um, it's pretty quiet as well, and it does take a little time to go through, but then they all do. And there you can see it coming out through the back.
and it does look like it um, it laminated pretty well. So now I'm going to try out their paper trimmer. Um, this is very lightweight, um, doesn't weigh anything more than a ruler, and it does include a ruler on there as well. Uh, it's one of the um, basically one of the slide cutting ones. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in and you're able to line up right on the edge of the guide to see that you've got about an eighth of an inch on there so that's I'd say that's probably good for measurement and slides across. Um, personally I don't like this type of paper trimmer. Um, I have another one and I did have some issues with it as well which is one reason why I switched over to the Fiskars that you see me use so often. Um, <coughs> This is the type that has that plastic with a little tiny blade on the end of it that cuts through. I feel that it drags whenever I try to use that one, where my guillotine doesn't seem to have any kind of a problem like that. So I really like my guillotine trimmer much better. Uh, but this is probably convenient to keep on your desk. If you don't already have a paper trimmer, this would help you with being able to cut through your laminate. I don't think you should probably cut more than one or two sheets of say paper or cardstock at a time because this is very very lightweight and in my mind it is a bit the plastic is very 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 flexible so in my mind it's probably one that is going to be um, easy to break so it's kind of a good to have just as a backup in case you need it but that's what our scissors are for if we really need to cut something I'm gonna reach for a pair of my um, Fisker scissors in a heartbeat uh, plus with Fiskars they tend to their guarantee is so good that if you have any problem with those products they will replace it no questions asked so you can see here I went ahead and got my corner chomper out because I had trouble with their corner rounder uh, but now I finished up that little project and there's a little bookmark that I can use I probably will send this out in happy mail this month. I like those little hearts and such. So I would have to say that I do like this laminator. It does well at what it's supposed to do and that's laminate. Um, it gets hot a lot faster than my other laminator and it tells you when it's ready to go. So the next thing I'm going to try out is doing some foiling because as a crafter I use my laminator for more than just laminating. One of the main things I want to do with it is I want to be able to foil. So for my first attempt at testing this out, I kind of made a mistake. I had taken a piece of cardstock that I had printed on with my um, laser jet in a real light pink and tried running that through with some, you know, some scrap um, foil and I used some 28 pound 28 pound um, paper to use as a carrier sheet this did not work well you'll see in a second that nothing came through on that um, toner that was used in my laser jet uh, what I had kind of tested this out last summer and the um, foil does tend to stick to colored <laughs> excuse me not just black toner but also color toner when you're printing out on a laser jet but I think there was so little ink or toner on the paper that it didn't do very well plus the carrier sheet 28 pound paper that I use for my good printing didn't it didn't work it's too thick so you're gonna see that that one did not work too well So I'm peeling it back and there's nothing. I was very surprised because there was nothing on there. So I thought, okay, what did I do wrong? Is it just that the, the um, laminator is not hot enough? Because I know that it is. We know it's hot enough because it went through fine with doing the laminating and I haven't had it cool down. I didn't turn it off, nothing like that. So it's still set on hot. So I decided, okay, let me try running it through without a carrier sheet, which is not recommended to do because you know things can kind of get stuck so let's see how that goes and I think each time I run something through the laminator I'm gonna speed it up you already saw that it goes through nice and slow and you don't need to be sitting here all day waiting for it to go through so I'm gonna speed this up for you so 
So now for the reveal. And there is no foiling on this sheet. I really think that the error that I made was trying to use um, a page that I had printed on with my laser jet, not using enough ink. I mean, that's the only thing I can think of that would cause that, but I will do some more experimenting later on. So since I thought that the problem was with the printing, I went ahead and printed out um, just a little word hello onto a piece of cardstock. And I'm going to be using, I believe this is going to be a 20 pound piece of paper as a carrier sheet. And I'm going to go ahead and try um, running that through with a fresh piece of foil. So I can tell just looking at it through the foil that it did adhere pretty well. So I'm going to run it through a second time just to be on the safe side, see how that turns out. So now that it's gone through two times, let's do a real quick reveal and look at that shine. That um, foil turned out perfect on there. Um, there was a smudge from where my I need to work on my uh, printer, but there wasn't enough toner in the other spot for it to come through well. So I think that that was the issue with the initial paper. You need to make sure that you're using enough toner on there so it needs to be a bold enough color. I have to say I do like this, um, this laminator. It is now having a permanent home on my desk and you should see some, you should see some foiling being done in, my, in some of my future projects. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful crafty day.